Okay, next one we want to take a look at is a series parallel circuit. We've actually looked already at a series circuit and some of the characteristics. We've looked at a parallel in the calculation and then also applying the one over formula and the product over sum formula for a parallel portion. Now we're going to take a look at the two combined together. And first of all, to make it easy for technicians to absorb this, we have to take a look at this and determine what we actually have here. Saying it's a series parallel is one thing, but actually defining it is different. So if we take a look, and one of the characteristics of a, of a series circuit is that there is only one path for current to flow. So in this particular branch, we only have one path for current to flow, and we have two resistors in series in that path. But right off of the battery and back to the battery, we're splitting right here, which means we are now a parallel circuit because we have more than one path and more than one load. Understanding also the second pathway also has two resistors in series, which means now we have a series path here and a series path here. So we have two series circuits connected in parallel, defining a series parallel circuit. So how we can go about calculating this, and we're going to also take a look at product over sum and the application of that as well as the one over for more reinforcement of that particular method of calculating out resistance total in the circuit. So first of all, I've already defined this as a series parallel circuit and I'm going to break it down and simplify the circuit more for myself so I can actually calculate it. So I'm going to take a look at breaking this circuit into two sections. So if I break it here and here, I can call this circuit A. And then I can break down the inside circuit and I'm going to call this circuit B. Now if I apply the laws to a series circuit, which is right here, I'm going to look at RTA because I want to know how much total resistance is in a path. So how we do go about doing this? Very simply, like a series circuit is simple. R1 plus R2 equals 4 ohms plus 4 ohms equals 8 ohms for RTA, or resistance total in A branch of the parallel circuit. Now I'm going to take a look at RTB, resistance total for B circuit. So again, R3 plus R4, because these are the two in this particular B branch of the circuit. So we plug in the numbers here now and we have 4 ohms plus 7 ohms equals 11 ohms. Now the assumption typically would be for most technicians is because we have a series circuit here and a series circuit here that we add the two of these together but that's not the case. What ends up happening here is that we actually have to divide them into each other because we have two separate series circuits that are wired in parallel to each other. So we have to apply product over sum or the one over formula. So we're going to look at both here and see if we come up with the same values. So if we go back over here and we take a look at product over the sum. So if we take 8 ohms times 11 ohms equaling 88 and then 8 ohms plus 11 ohms equaling 19 and we divide 88 by 19 we end up with 4.63 ohms so that's using the product over some method and remember the value that we have right here now we'll take a look at the one over formula. So, sorry, I should have put RT. RT equals product over sum. So now we've calculated out the resistance total using product over sum. We're going to take a look at the one over formula. So RT equals one over one over RTA plus 1 over RTB. And we're using this here because we've already established what the 
circuit resistance is based on that series path and the value that it adds up to here and adds up to here. So if we plug in the numbers some more, so one divided by eight plus one divided by 11. Now we go one over, one divided by eight calculates out to 0.125 plus one divided by 11 calculates out to 0 0.090. And if we add these up, we end up with 1 divided by 0.215, which equals 4.65. 4.65. And like I said before, we take a look at this in comparison. If I was to take that decimal place off, rounding to 1, and rounding to 1 here, then we still end up with... 4.6, 4.6 in regards to the overall amount of resistance in the circuit. Okay, we've already established what the total circuit resistance is. Now we have to take a look at what the current flow is. And first of all, we need to find out what and how much is flowing in the entire circuit. And then of course, it's going to be different in both branches because the current will flow at a different rate based upon the resistance in each branch. So if we take a look at IT, IT equals E over RT. And if we have 12.9 volts and a resistance of 4.6 ohms, and we divide the top into the bottom, it will give us 2.80 amps. Now what we have to look at is where this is actually flowing. And it's obviously going to flow at a different rate in each path because we have two different resistance values between the RTA path and the RTB path. So now we're going to take a look at the each individual path. So if I say ITA, and that's what we're looking for, is the amount of current flowing in path A. So we take a look at this and we calculate it as E over RTA. And we use 12.9 volts divided by the resistance total of A. And if we go back and take a look, it's 8 ohms. eight ohms and we take 12.9 and we divide it by eight gives us 1.61 amps then we take a look at ITB and to look at how much current is flowing in B path we take the voltage in B path, and in a parallel circuit, it's always going to equal source voltage in each branch. And then we divide that by the resistance total of B. So we've got 12.9 volts. Resistance total of B path is 11 ohms. And if we divide 12.9 by 11 ohms, it gives us 1.17 amps, 1.17 amps. So now if we take a look at the overall IT in the circuit, so IT equals ITA plus ITB. And if we plug them in, I'm just going to put them on top of each other, 1.61 for ITA, ITB is 1.17 add the two of them up, calculates out to 2.78 amps, 2.78 amps. So again, if we take a look at what we have for the overall amount of amperage over here for IT, it calculated out to 2.80 amps. If I was to round up, then we could actually make this 2.8 amps. And the two of them, again, are the same when we calculate. So the difference here is 
the resistance in one path having a few ohms more than the other path changes how much current flows. And you can see that based on having more resistance, we have less current flowing in that particular path compared to this path. So this path may have too much current flowing because it doesn't have enough resistance, or this path may have too much resistance and not enough current flowing, which can actually change how some of the components or loads in the circuit do function.